2016 Honda. Right away, we know about the TSB and the problem with leaking condensers. Uh, we know through experience these get leaking front shaft seal. We know through experience these get leaking evaporators. This was charged eight months ago and it only had 31 PSI of refrigerant in the system when I hooked up to it. So we know we have a big leak. We lost the entire charge, basically. There's not one drop of liquid refrigerant in the system. So I hit it with some nitrogen at 250 PSI. I've had it sitting here for the last 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I did a leak check scan on it using different UV lights because somebody already put dye in there. And I found out what spectrum of UV light shine the brightest with the residue of UV oil that they had in the service cap and then started looking for leaks. No visible leaks at visible, visible components. Um, I never trust anybody, so I always test the refrigerants, what they put in there. It was 100% pure and there was 0% air. So there was no problem there. So I can continue on. After allowing it to set with uh, 154 PSI, hoping I would force the evaporator so we can build up a concentration. You can see my two leak detectors right there. Going around in all places looking for a leak. Still no leak. I've done this too many times on these Hondas to know that if I fill this up again, it will leak. And I could fill it up and it could start leaking in 10 minutes or it'll be a few months. Uh, what else have I noticed? Oh, yes. So depending on their dye, their oil, and this is POE oil, not PAG oil, guys. You don't put PAG oil in these systems when you replace parts. Um, I'll fill them up and he can come back out of gas again in a few months and there'll be no residue on the leaking condenser, no evidence. And I'll go through it with the leak detectors and I'll go through it with the light and I'll go through it with the ultrasonic and find nothing and same goes for the evaporator and then all of a sudden by the third time maybe uh there's huge uh dye and over at the condenser or we finally find it another thing you do is you get access to the case if you can on some of these vehicles if you can't pull out a component underneath you try to stick up uh you have to drill a small hole where because the evaporator coil depending on the angle of where the evaporator is if you could get to the side of the case uh, this is extra labor you have to charge for it you drill a hole where you know you're not going to hit the evaporator case and this is an experience thing guys don't put a hole in an evaporator you won't be happy your boss won't be happy the customer won't be happy well the customer gets a new evaporator um so you drill a hole before and after and you stick your bore scope down inside and look at the case with your bore scope with some bore scopes have uv lights on them so if there's dye you will see it uh bore scope without a uv light usually if the leak was old enough and it gathered enough oil the little bit of dust that gets past the cabin filter will leave a dark stain on the evaporator where there's a leak I have seen evaporators leak an entire charge out in a couple weeks and leave absolutely no oil residue. So don't always rely on oil residue. All right, guys, I see you later. Uh, I'm gonna go through the recharge procedure on this one now, since I could not find it the easy way and fill it up and re-leak test it again. Other than that, um, you gotta tell the customer, this has TSBs out on it. It has a problem with the condenser. It has a problem with the evaporator and it has a problem with the front shaft seal. The front shaft seal is completely dry. There is absolutely no oil residue. I've shown videos where it's all wet looking and you can see the spin of the oil fleeing from the compressor pulley and clutch and it'll be flung all over. You get down on the drip tube down there, get your UV light and stick your UV light at the drip tube for the condensate drain, see if there's any glowing, but that will only glow if there's enough dye and oil that came out, it actually dripped to the bottom of the pan. If the leak doesn't produce enough oil to get the dye to come out with it and hit the bottom of the pan, you'll see nothing, but there's still a leak at the evaporator. So you can't always rely on that. So let's continue on here. And if I don't find the leak by the time I completely charge it up, run it for a while, then he's going to be sent off to come back again and uh, with my dye in it. And uh, 
We'll see what happens.